Hey gang, welcome back to Inverted Pursuits Laboratory. And this week we're doing a little bit of a non-standard video. Usually we're on rocketry content. This is gonna be one of those random ones that's not. So if you're here for rocketry content, I'm sorry, go ahead and leave, I understand. But we're gonna actually be discussing something pretty cool. So I've got a bunch of these old ornaments the old school Hallmark keepsake ornaments. They plug directly into your string of lights and they're supposed to be powered off that. Um, as I've been changing a lot of Christmas trees uh, over to LED, I've been running into the issue where they don't work as consistently. Some will, some won't. They work pretty consistently, I'll say about 80% of the time with the incandescent ones you can still buy. But when I've been going to LED strings, trying to save a little bit of power on that, uh, energy bill during Christmas time um, or during the holiday seasons um, we are I find that they just they, they're not working as consistently so I was looking for a solution to that keep or uh, Hallmark nowadays has gone to their keepsake power cords which I thought were uh, really cool I've got a couple ornaments that use these keepsake power cords like I I've got a couple of them floating around now, but they've got these really tiny, oh goodness, things getting tangled. These really tiny little connectors that are not something that's easy to find, but I found them. So they take these little itty bitty connectors, like these things are tiny, um, but I bought them just to see if they'd actually work and they fit perfectly. So it was a great time for me to then go, okay, that's it. So that's what I needed. So then I took an old set of lights that had long ago died. Um, actually, one I found at my parents' place. I don't know why they kept hold of it, but it worked out for me. So you've got an old set of lights. You're actually gonna need the entire set of lights. S cut this little chunk out. We'll solder in a piece and we'll end up with what I've already prototyped is one of these guys. So it's an adapter from uh, basically your Christmas tree light cord to the brand new Hallmark keepsake cords. So you can keep all of these old ornaments alive with this. Now I have proven they work. I'll go ahead and show you here at the beginning of the video that it does work. Um, so for those of you that are curious now, the question gets answered and you're not waiting for an hour while we build it. And I'll show you how to build it just to see if it works. And that killed my lights, not a big deal. Um, but we're gonna real quick, uh, actually I'm gonna pull out a different one. Got a handful of these down here. This one is the one I did originally to test the swap over and if it would work. This is a Gungan submarine, old Star Wars toy, or old Star Wars uh, ornament. But as you can see when we plug that in, um, it's not, it's it's old and so it's got some issues with it all the way around um, but we light up the back here i can show it turns off when i unplug it if i can unplug it it turns off and it turns back on when i plug it back in so we can see that's all lit up uh, it does also light up this little section at the front here in the cab so proof that it works now the reason that this works, if some of you are curious, is because the ornaments still actually use the same voltage. So even though we're in a new era of ornaments, the ornaments still use the same voltage, they take the same power requirements. Super handy on all of that. All right, one more little update I felt like I should toss in here real quick. Um, the power supply for the keepsake power cord that uh, Hallmark currently sells outputs five volts the uh, old ornaments actually take six volts so i was wrong when i said that they take the same voltage um, but they're within a volt of each other you can however buy a power cord adapter or buy a different wall plug that will still work off the same keepsake cord it just changes the um, plug uh, that goes into the wall the wall plug and that wall plug is what controls the voltage output uh, that will be supplied to the line so you can buy a six foot six volt variant of that that will plug into your system so i've linked that in the description down below as well um, you can pick one of those up as well as the little adapters if you're going to be doing it and it will match perfectly six volts i will say as soon as you do that do not plug modern keepsake power ornaments into that six volt line they are meant for five volts not six they will probably run for a while 
but let's not see how that goes. If you modify it to do six volts, make sure you mark that that is a six volt line meant for your updated setup. <laughs> so otherwise they will run just fine on five volts. They're a little less bright than they would be on the six volt line, but they do run just as well. So. I'm going to bring you guys in a little closer to my workstation. I'm going to show you all the parts I use. There will be a link in the description to every piece I use um, from just an old school uh, light set that I cut a couple of these off of to exactly what these plugs are and where I found them. And then just some of the general other supplies I use while doing this build. So let's jump right in. So when I said the needs for this build were not very complicated, I was not kidding. These are all the parts I'm gonna use for this entire build. So I've got my Christmas tree light plug, a piece of heat shrink. I actually will use a couple pieces of heat shrink. This is just the current small one I've got. I'll also end up using um, one of these small white pieces and the plug here so plug again linked in the description below i cannot for the life of me actually remember the name of them but i know i will have them linked so there is this little metal clip its only purpose is for surface mounting to a board you can see this little tiny clip here um, in comparison to the two one i've taken it off on one i haven't you can see i've just taken off this little metal piece it's for when you do a board mount it just gives you something else to solder to to make sure the thing doesn't move only purpose of it. So we don't need it for this build, so we get rid of it. From there, we're gonna, I'm using a pair of nippers. I'd use a pair of pliers personally if I were you. I'm gonna bend this tab on the back out um, because this is meant for surface mount, but I don't wanna surface mount it. And then I'm going to bend the two uh, tabs over on each other, bring them together, make those easier to solder together. So it does not matter which wire you solder where. The um, poles are reversible. I've plugged them in forwards, backwards, upside down, left and right, and they still work. This is, I believe, 18 gauge wire. So we'll strip, uh, let's try that again on the 22. Strip a couple pieces off of this. I'm actually going to go ahead and make this one a little shorter just to make it easier for soldering by offsetting the uh, two wires. It makes it such that when I solder the two sets together, I get a little bit better connection. Um, but I'm actually going to want to strip back a little bit more on my upper set. So. Let's jump you guys in just a little bit closer before we start the whole soldering. All right guys, so first thing we're gonna do here in the actual build, get some cord around, is we're going to tin the little wires. Uh, it doesn't require a whole lot of heat or a whole lot of solder. Our goal is just to get some solder into the copper, uh, make it a little easier for ourselves to work with. So just tin in our wires real quick. Always important to keep your soldering iron clean through this process. Don't need a huge amount on there. Next thing we're gonna do is take our connector and I am going to basically bridge the, oh goodness, it's hard to show this. I'm gonna bridge the two tabs that exist here. So I wanna go ahead and tin all of the connections. And basically I'll end up bridging 
the connections. So what we're going to start with is I'm going to put a piece of heat shrink on here. We're going to bring our two lower bits together. And that's set real quick and then what we can do is I'm just going to use the edge of my soldering iron not the part I've been soldering on to shrink this piece of heat shrink down on here this one's sole purpose is just to keep us from shorting I could have used half this length no problem uh, but I wanted to have a little bit of extra so so from here our next goal is to solder these two pieces together. I actually am going to decide this wire is a little long, which is fine. And I'm going to go ahead and snip the tip of that off. Do be careful if you do that. And then I'm going to just gently try and bridge the solder across this wire and the two pieces. And now if I take this off and you look at that, you can see it is, well, I hope you guys can see, let's double check, yep, you can see that is connected and is one bridged piece. So, from here what we're going to do is, literally that's the entire assembly. Our next thing is just to seal it up, go ahead and end up doing, just to make our life simple. It doesn't have to have the entire sleeve, I just wanted it entirely sleeved because I prefer to have it entirely sleeved um, but that is not a requirement by any means so we're gonna go ahead and ooh, I was able to get this to move this way I'm just gonna use the tip of this paintbrush to at least sleeve over the back end here I would argue you need a little bit bigger than um, shrinks from quarter to eighth. Uh, some three eighths would do you a lot better, especially on shrinking. So from there, we've got our coverage that we need. We're just going to use the edge of our soldering iron real quick to shrink this down on by no means trying to get anywhere near the part that I use for soldering to keep that as clean as possible but that's a real quick way to get yourself a connector that will work on any ornament you have now just to prove this is this will work we're gonna go ahead and get the ornament out of the box alright so this will be this ornaments first time out of the box to be modified um, so what we're gonna do is go ahead and swap out this end because these do not use the same end all you gotta do to swap out the end on one of these is just pry up their little wires and then the light bulb literally just falls off like the light bulb just comes right apart and then you do the same thing these are on the instructions that usually come with them uh, with the ornaments for getting them back apart you just bend up the wires pull the tip off Put the new tip on to match the light strand you're using. And they do tell you to make sure you're using, you uh, adjust this to match. They want to make sure that you've got a good fit and are not just using any connector. I keep the connector it came with, with the ornament. But from there, we can quickly test fit. I always want to do one push in just to make sure everything's bent together properly. And then, We'll go ahead and plug in our wire and this was always this one was a little more finicky than others so it may not want to work as readily may have 
have to just prove it with the other one. Let me clean up this little bit of flashing this particular bulb had. Make sure we get a good seat. Okay, and they are on, um, oh my goodness, they're really hard to see. You might be able to see right through here that the LEDs are on inside there. The problem is I am filming with studio lights right now, so I'm struggling to see it. Let's go ahead and plug in the one that's got a much more visible light. And just like that, you can see that the light is working. It's powered by this cable. But that is how you can modify... Um, your old Hallmark ornaments. And it's not even modifying the ornament, that's the best part. This is literally building one piece, this one little adapter, and it now allows all of your old school Hallmark keepsake ornaments to be powered by a modern keepsake power cord. So, never again do you have to worry about whether your old strand of lights is gonna die, or whether you're gonna have uh, the ability to power your ornaments for this year like this this is your solution so if you've got any questions leave them in the comments below um i did guarantee you other people have done this i just came up with this idea over the winter to try and uh winter months here in the u.s i should say um to try and figure out how to power these because my power cords were hit or miss on their ability to power them and they didn't even work the entire season sometimes they just wouldn't power the ornament and some days they would um, but this gets rid of that will they won't they question and just guarantees they will get powered so i plan to make a bunch of these um, i bought like a 10 pack of these little connectors so i can make as many of these as i want to power as many ornaments as i want so thanks for watching gang I hope to see you all in the next video. Uh, if you're new to the channel, we are predominantly a rocketry channel, but we also do fun little projects like these. So stick around and you might learn some cool stuff. Thanks for watching, gang. See you in the next video.